Welcome to the second season of Cooking Gone Wild. This season, you will notice a few changes, most notably that our videos are significantly longer. And the reason for this is because we're now going from the field to the table, which means we're not just giving you these tasty recipes, but we're actually showing you everything you need to know to harvest the fish or wild game in the field. So these are real hunting and fishing experiences, and that means I'm not gonna catch a fish on every cast, and I'm not gonna harvest a deer within the first hour, but any day in the woods is a great day in my book. Welcome to Cooking Gone Wild, Field to Table. We are in Michigan City today at Trail Creek. Standing next to me is Ben, our assistant Lake Michigan biologist, and we're gonna go over a little bit of fish biology today. A lot of people don't even know that we have salmon and trout in Indiana, so let's talk a little bit about that and maybe what a salmon run is and what we have going on right now. Lake Michigan was planted with salmon uh, in the late 1960s to control invasive alewives, and uh, Trail Creek right here is one of our main tributaries to Lake Michigan. And uh, in the fall, we have coho and chinook salmon that migrate up the river uh, looking for spawning habitat and uh, also in the river at this time are steelhead and they spawn in the spring but they will come in starting in the summer with our skimania steelhead uh, which are summer run and they'll stay in the, the river until spring to spawn and then after the skimanias we have michigan winter run steelhead that come up in the late fall and they will feed on the eggs that the salmon are are producing so we have these different species. We have trout and salmon. So mm -hmm. what are the kind of differences between these fish as far as biology, ecology, how they taste, that sort of thing? Sure. Um, well, the salmon will come in, and they come in and spawn, and then they will die immediately after spawning. Okay. Uh, whereas the trout, such as the rainbow trout, uh, we call the migratory version of a rainbow trout a steelhead. Mm -hmm. It stays in the ocean or a lake, and then it runs up the river to spawn. And it will spawn and survive and then go back out in the lake and it will come back in and spawn again later in life. So that's the main kind of difference between a steelhead trout and a salmon. Now that we've talked a little bit about the biology, we're gonna go into all the equipment that we need to go steelheading. So today I have Mike with me from the Northwest Indiana Steelheaders Association and he's gonna go through all the equipment that we need to catch some steelheads because I'm new at this and I need someone to show me the ropes. Okay, basically when we uh, head out to go steelhead fishing, we use either bait, we use uh, spinners, or we use flies. And so probably the most productive method we have on our streams is to use uh, spawn sacks. And um, I'm gonna reach right down here and bring them over. Uh, these are eggs from the fish. Uh, we normally take them right from the fish, and then we cure them, and then uh, you can put a number of different dyes into them. One of the things about steelhead, they hate red, they hate orange, and so uh, uh, these are two most popular colors. One of the other most productive methods to use is uh, spinners. We've got all these different options. How do we know what to use, what time of year? Is it just kind of a go out and try and you learn as you go? Is there some fishing secret I need to know? <laughs> uh, normally, after the salmon are in the streams, the steelhead will follow them up and brown trout, and so uh, eggs work really well. They make some real high-tech bobbers now. I still like to use uh, cheap Carlisle bobbers. What I do is take the spring off and put a piece of surgical tubing. These are big fish. That spring will cut your line, and so uh, by uh, Using surgical tubing on the bobber, it uh, will hold it up there and it makes it easy to adjust. Uh, one of the things you, you notice here is the long rods. And the reason we use long rods, that we're not using short bass rods, is these steelhead in these streams like to jump. And these rods act like big shock absorbers. When you get a fish on, you let the fish fight the rod. And you can actually be fighting the 
fish and bend the rod and have the butt pointed at the fish and you just let them fight them. And uh, that's why we go with these longer, uh, uh, real lightweight rods. These are the fastest fish in fresh water. And if you make a mistake, you got a little time to recover. And so this is the rig I use for uh, bobber fishing or drift fishing. It's just a bobber like I showed you, mm -hmm. uh, a split shot. Okay. And then I use, uh, this is a, a laser uh, 42 hook. So with that, you would just put one of these sacks yep. right on the hook? Yeah, I would and just, just uh, put it right on the hook like that. As you can see, the juice runs out of the hook and uh, or out of the spawn sack and that melts down the stream. These fish have an uh, incredible sense of smell. Now this line too um, is different, I can see. Can you explain a little bit to me about okay. the weight and everything like okay. that? Okay. With steelhead fishing, we fish summer and we also fish winters. In winter time you'll get the line a little kind of freeze up and that and uh, in the cold weather it'll kind of spool off your line and so that's why you go with a light limber line. You don't want to use a heavier. This is a eight pound test. Uh, normally that's good to land about most fish in the stream. Okay, so we've gone through all this equipment and now I'm ready to get out there and actually do some fishing. So let's decide what rod I need, get me all set up and get out there and hopefully catch some fish, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so basically what we're going to want to do is cast in the plume of the water right next to that eddy line. So in the fast water and it just drifts right down and we want to have a drag free drift just naturally with the current for as long as we go. Okay. And it'll be important to not have too much slack in your line mm -hmm. because if you do get a bite you want to be able to set the hook rather than um, have slack line and just, right. you know, not hook up. I'm just going to do a little underhand flip right on the edge of the current. Okay. And then I'm gonna see how I hold my rod tip up and that I was gonna say prevents me from getting snagged, but I got <laughs> snagged immediately. Um, so that's generally what you wanna do. Okay. And so what I'll do with a hole like this is I'll fish it close to me first to get any fish that might be right here that I would spook by casting a long way. Right. And then I'll progressively fish farther out and farther out. So when do I give up? Um, going down or just let it probably right about there. there? You okay. can, if it was just one person and you got out there, you could float it almost down to the end of your vision. Right. But the conundrum with that is hooking a fish at the far <laughs> downstream end, and your chances get less and less as you get farther away from it. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I didn't catch it. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, well, I was yapping at Michelle, not paying attention, and all of a sudden my line started going out, and uh, I set the hook, and we, uh, yeah. were, we were cross lines because we weren't paying attention, and all mayhem broke Whoa. loose. There he goes. She ran after it with the net, and I ended up hand lining it in the last 20 feet. Caught him on a spawn sack on the bottom. I, I was. I was. Well, yeah, That was a good fight. They sure are fish, fun. Though. You saw how far down he went downstream. I mean, yeah. that was 100 yards downstream. Awesome. All right, chef. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing. Well, I'm just going to keep trying the same technique. I think I've got the casting down a little better now. I'm just got to keep going out there, keep doing it.
As our first day of fishing came to a close, Ben was still the only one to catch a fish, even though we saw a good number of steelhead. Sometimes the fish just don't want to bite. What can you do? So we decided to come out for a second day on Trail Creek and try a few new fishing spots, hoping that our luck would change. After fishing all morning with little luck, we were a little afraid that we were going to get skunked. That is, until Ben decided to cast under a log just a few feet from shore. Within just a few seconds, a fish popped. Hello, Mr. Steelhead. After Ben caught his fish, I managed to hook into two steelhead and not land either one of them. So when I hooked into the third fish, I was ready to make sure I landed that thing. All right, for the life of me, I'm bringing this fish on land. <laughs> hey! Hey, look at the little guy. <laughs> It counts. Ha! I'm throwing you back, but regardless, whew, maybe Ooh. I'm throwing you back. Ooh. That's all right. I caught a steelhead. I hate to burst your bubble. But it's not a steelhead, isn't it? What it's a coho. Okay, fine. I caught a coho. I don't even care. It's. It's a salmonid. Exactly. Yeah, you want to hold it's it up a for fish. The... I do. Oh, is it the mouth black instead of white? Isn't that part of it? Ah! He's peeing on you. So the tail is slightly forked. Uh huh. Oh yeah. You see, the steelhead is a square, completely square tail. Yep. On the edge here, and look at all the spotting throughout the tail. Mm. Whereas it's the coho the just has edges. light spotting. Awesome. Cool. All right, let's get that out of here. Release you. To go I mean, well, he's gonna die. Okay. So well, we might as well. Keep we might him. as well keep him. <laughs> he's gonna die after spawning. True. Very true. And now, does he, he have a, the black tongue and gums in there too? Is that how? Yeah. So you can see yeah. how he's got a gray tongue and gray mouth. Yep. Where's the steelhead? It has totally white everything. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> it finally landed one. Hold it up higher, hold it up higher. There you well, go. I'm trying my best, but he's a little pretty squirmy. See, this is what happened. Oh. Hold on. It's not like I can stick my fingers in his mouth because he's got teeth. Oh. oh, yeah. See that? Yep, That's he's called a male. milk. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a male and he's ready to spawn. Ah! <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> Yeah, it's not the first time. <laughs> Generally, it's walleye, you know, yeah. walleye run, but you know, why not? Here, let's throw them on the stringer. We can we can <laughs> rinse them off then. <laughs> Ben is going to show us the proper way to fillet this steelhead and then I'm going to try to replicate it. Hopefully the proper way. We'll show you one <laughs> way and people can agree or disagree with me. Uh, usually what I do is I cut in at an angle to get under the scales, right at the top, and then I will hold it and I'm sawing through the pin bones right next to the backbone here. And when I get down to right about just in front of the anal fin, I'll pop the knife out, angle it slightly down, take it all the way out to the tail. And steelhead pin bones tend to be pretty, pretty tough. You gotta use a little bit of force to get through them. Now I've had this, and 
going right over the ribs. And then I avoid the, the belly fat with some of the unwanted contaminants in it. And just, there's the filet. Awesome, so basically the same concept you'd use to fillet a crappie or bluegill or... Pretty much, yeah, campus. except the, the trout do have these this line of pin bones right here um, that you cut through and then some people will remove those and some people will choose to leave them in and eat around them. Then do you have any favorite ways that you have to cook steelhead or...? Uh, well, for me it's pretty hard to be grilled or baked in the oven. Uh, I also like to smoke them and uh, I've recently started making kind of salmon patties like crab cakes, so oh, that's that uh, my new favorite great. way of doing it. Might have to try that. It'll be similar to our bluegill meatloaf muffins, <laughs> but uh, with a different fish, maybe put a little dill sauce or something. Oh, that sounds I good. Like Horseradish dill sauce. Yeah, there we go. Now that we have cleaned our steelhead, we are going to make two simple recipes. The first is a simple salmon steak that we're going to make with a rice pilaf, and the second one is salmon salad sandwiches. Now, I'm saying salmon even though it's steelhead. Steelhead is technically trout, but as you can kind of see from the meat here, it's, it looks very similar to salmon. It's got a very red color, so we're gonna treat it just like we would a salmon. We have our oven preheated to 350 degrees, and this is really simple. So here we have our steelhead, and we're just gonna take a nice big baking dish, drizzle it with some olive oil, or any kind of oil, just to keep it from sticking to the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure it's evenly distributed. I am gonna place the steelhead in here, skin side down, because you're not gonna eat the skin, you're gonna peel that off anyway. You can see that there. Just gonna salt and pepper. Just enough to kind of cover each And here we have some pretty thinly sliced lemons. So we are gonna place this on top and we wanna cover each one. And one more on this one for good measure. Okay, so we have all of the pieces covered with lemon and then this is just a can of crushed tomatoes. So we're just gonna kinda of pour this over the top. I'm gonna kinda of spread it around with my fingers. And that's it. We're gonna throw it in the oven and bake it for an hour. Now I'm gonna show you what you can do if you have some leftover salmon. You know, usually you get a fair amount, so you're gonna just cook it all at once, and then after you take the salmon steaks out, put them in the fridge, you can easily take the skin off and you get this, which is just basically the chunked up salmon. So we're gonna take this and make a salmon salad. So we have mayonnaise here. And this is kind of one of those things you're just gonna have to look and see what you think you need. So I'm gonna add some in and kind of stir it around. I'm gonna stir with a fork so it'll really uh, break up the salmon a little bit more. You might need to add some more in. It's just kind of one of those things you just kind of have to eyeball it. So put this in first. And the next thing I'm gonna do is squeeze some fresh lemon juice in there. You can use pre-bought lemon juice if you want. I just prefer, I already had lemons, so I prefer to make it fresh squeezed. It gives it that little extra freshness. All right. Mix that around. Our other ingredients, salt and pepper. And that's again, kind of to your taste. So. You've already salt and peppered the fish a little bit. It'll just kind of depend on what you think. And this is dill pickle relish. So it's real similar to like a chicken salad, but we are using Indiana caught steelhead. I have here some Vidalia onions. Just chop these up. You can skip the onions if you really don't like them. Maybe substitute for celery if you want. Mix that all in there. You can see as you start to add more, um, you'll need to probably add a little more mayonnaise. So you're gonna do that. And add, oh, just a tiny bit of Worcestershire sauce. It's 
just gives that that little extra flavor in there. The last thing we're gonna add to this is hard boiled egg. So I hard boiled two eggs ahead of time. I'm gonna go ahead and crack, chop those and stick them in here. Then we will make our sandwiches. Now that we have our eggs, we'll go ahead and mix those in. I'm gonna add the rest of the mayonnaise. everything incorporated real well. Looks good, smells good. Now we're just gonna slice a piece of French bread, put some of this on, a piece of cheese on top, and just kind of toast it in the oven until it gets nice and melty. <clears throat> here are our two finished recipes. Over here we have the baked salmon steaks. It's a really simple recipe and it goes well with anything. We have it paired with a butternut squash risotto. But you could really pair it with any kind of rice or pasta that you want because it's a real mild, simple recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and try our salmon steaks. Very good, just real mild. The lemon really gives it more of a mild flavor versus a fishy flavor. Very simple, you could always add to that too if you want a little more spice or something. Over here we have the salmon salad sandwich and this is just really simple. We just put it with some potato chips for lunch and it's, it's really tasty. So I am ready to taste this. We put a little sriracha there because I like everything with a little spice. That's kind of up to you, but it pairs really well and gives it that little kick. So I'm just gonna do a little dip in the sriracha. Mm, perfect, the sriracha adds just a nice little kick. You've got the kind of saltiness, creaminess from the cheese and everything just goes together really well. I'm excited to eat the rest of it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today for our Cooking Gone Wild Field to Table episode. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to go steelhead fishing in Indiana and some great recipes if you're successful. So if you have some more questions about fishing for steelhead or about our recipes, feel free to ask them on our Division of Fish and Wildlife Facebook page, and we'll see you next time. All right, I think I'm stuck on something. Yep. It's like it feels heavy, but it doesn't feel like a fish. Hey! She's not skunked. <laughs> Yay! Crawdad. 50 more of those and you're in business. We'll cook him up. It's a sizable one. Give me a bucket. We'll just get a bunch of these. I'll cook these up.